What's going on everybody? It's Relentless here bringing you yet another Division video. Uh, I've been doing nothing but doing a little bit of experimentation in the DZ, uh, mix matching different things, trying to figure out, you know, this whole 1.8.3 thing since I have been back and it's been a lot of fun. Um, but I mean, I see so much of the same things in the Dark Zone. And through discussing it with a lot of social media sites on Facebook, such as Revolution Gaming and Upper Echelon Gaming, also the Division 2 page, um, it seems a lot of people, it's a love-hate relationship right now with 1.8.3. And uh, also, I'm in agreement that I wish this Rogue 2.0 thing would just go back the way it was. And when the devs decide to tweak a few things, they seem to take it a little too far. But, you know, that's the way it's always been since the release of the Division, and you just have to adapt to it. Um, but as far as, you know, the diversity in the build situation in the DZ, basically, um, you're slowly seeing a different variety of things, slowly. But more or less, it's the same old, same old, the Nomad, uh, the Pred, uh, you get more D3 FNC just because there is an exploit. To where you can have 9k firearms and 9k stamina and a lot of people are running it i mean, this is not a <laughs> how to exploit video i'm just letting you know it's there and also there's another exploit um when it comes to dead eye and other th things uh i think I believe wiz has touched on this as far as um your character more or less stays in like a crouched in cover position so that way you always have you know first shot accuracy and crit you know when it comes to dead eye and also i mean it helps out a bunch of other things but anyways let's get back before i get too far off point if you're new uh to the channel uh thank you so much for tuning in appreciate it. all those that has been loyal and faithful and that are tuning in appreciate it thank you so much uh but let's hop into the video like i said i just been uh experimenting with different things <clears throat> And uh, I come to the conclusion, you know, the little DZ PvP and also PvE on um, more or less my playstyle. And this is more or less what I come up with, this little hybrid build. And it works out pretty well. Um, you uh, obtain max crit chance, uh, high crit damage, uh, survivability. And once this uh, bad boy is min maxed, it's going to continue to keep rolling over those. Uh, not only as somewhat of a support build, but also laying down DPS in the process. But without further ado, let's hop right into it. And like I said before, this is just my interpretation of how I play uh, and my play style. And the build reflects that. And it's quite a lot of fun. As you can th see, 306k firepower, firearms 5189, toughness 466 and a half k, stamina 6370, skill power 181.6k, electronics is 4369. Um, going on to uh, talking about the toughness part, in my opinion, what I've been playing so far in the DZ, if you're not necessarily running Nomad, you want to at least have, in my opinion, 460 or above in toughness. Um, it all more or less depends if you're a support build or DPS build, or you're using those uh, such as six-piece Pred uh, and running the 9K stamina or the D3 FNC at 9K. But yet, if you're running like a Hexo build or a hybrid build such as this, then you want to be uh, anywhere between 460K toughness and above with significant enough healing, and this build has it all. Moving on to the first weapon is the my mp5 st 18.1k and it has deadly unforgiving and responsive in the magazine 110 percent magazine size crit hit damage crit hit chance the trifecta 18 percent crit damage headshot damage and crit chance on the optics in the muzzle we have crit damage crit chance stability and increased threat uh also um in the small underbarrel 18 percent crit damage and reload speed and stability um it helps with it but more importantly it's the crit damage that uh we want and that's what we want most of all and most importantly is that on my secondary i'm just running around this little sweet vector at 19.6k base with self-preserved deadly and predatory as we all know self uh preserved crit hit with this weapon heal the user for three percent of damage dealt 
uh, deadly to go help out with the crit damage and predatory killing a target regenerates 35% of your health over 20 seconds. And also, um, if I want to run also something a little different, such as an AR, I have this scar for with predatory, vicious, and self-preserved. Or I have this uh, LVOC AC that I picked up with predatory, sustained, and competent. And the reason for this is whether it be PVE or PVP, um, if let's say you're on the run or you just put everybody in back into the checkpoint or the safe room, and uh, you are out of medkits, but yet you know how random NPCs spawn up, little red or blues. Well, you can pretty much whip out your secondary, uh, get a couple kills, uh, and finish topping off your health. So that way you're at full health and you don't just stop at two bars. So it really comes in handy. Um, like I said, in, if you're one of those that uh, like to flag and go manhunt or rogue and just want to take off running... Uh, and all those pesky predators marks are just bleeding you dry and you have run out of med kits um, You duck in the subway or whatnot And you're needing some health just pop off a couple of rounds and kill an NPC or two and bam You're back in business back at full health and just I guess if you're that scared just keep on running and rinse and repeat But anyways enough about that Let's moving on uh, also on my sidearm as you can see I have predatory on it as well and this is a three-piece pred, which is actually really two-piece pred, ninja bag, and three tactician. Now, if you want, let's say, uh, to put bleed on people and to slow down those runners so that way they expend all their med kits, you can swap out uh, any three of these tacticians with a pred. And you'll still be around the same base stats as what I have now, as you can see with that one. Uh, just the only difference is... Um, the holster has a different major attribute than this Predator's Mark does. This just gives the extra 4% crit chance. But on the chest piece, we have enemy armor damage. Instead of enemy armor damage, my ideal chest piece with this particular build would be skill haste, uh, health, and ammo capacity. Um, that would be my three main uh, major attributes that I would want. And as soon as I get a hold of one, that's what this will be. And in the mod slots, we have 259 stamina and another 259 stamina with both skill power. Um, the, the RNG uh, hasn't been great to me after crafting so many and looking for the right ones. Um, you can have uh, better stats on your mods. So if you do and try to make this build, then if you have better mods, then your stats will reflect that and it'll be much better than mine currently is. But it is a work in progress. Moving on to the mask. You want skill power as a major attribute. Minor doesn't really matter, but if you're into the PvP, then the damage to elites work. Um, 1376 in stamina, and I can still optimize pretty much every single piece on this. And once that's done, uh, my toughness will actually be reflected in that and actually be higher than currently what it is now. As you can see, 1376, and it can be up to 1401. And the mask can get up to a, a thousand and one armor. That is the the perfect ideal situation that you would want. And in the mod slot, we have 265 electronics and 3,000 skill power. Moving on to the knee pads, 1584 uh, armor, which is a little low, but with optimization, that number will increase. And thus, like I said before, my toughness, uh, electronics 1377, and can be to 1401. Major attributes, you'd want skill power and the miners. I have bleed resistance, shock resistance, and burn resistance. And in the mod slots, we have stamina uh, with a little extra skill haste sprinkled in there with the rest. And then we have a first aid self heal. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the ninja bag, um, I would almost be around, I'd say, 194k skill power, um, but this is the only ninja bag that I currently have. Um, 1271 max main stat with the firearms and the downside of this one is as you can see in the major attribute spot it has stability and I would want um, skill power in this situation and in the minor attributes ammo capacity and in my mod slots stamina skill power with two first aid self heals so basically anywhere that you can um, you want to roll skill power on 
uh, in the major such as your backpack and your mask and you want skill haste on everything that you can get on. Moving on to the gloves, since I'm primarily using the SMG, we have the trifecta with crit hit damage, SMG damage, and crit hit chance, and 1379 base stat. Moving on to the holster, as you can see in the major attributes, we have skill haste, uh, 881, it's a low armor roll. As you can see, my striker holster there, and the Banshee one below is at 1001, but it's only a 278 gear score. So as I uh, accumulate the uh, the requirements to keep optimize, optimizing each piece, then all these stats and values will go up. But basically the premise of this is to have the four-piece tactician with a three-piece predator. And for those that are new to the game or playing on the free weekend, um, basically with the ninja bag you can add any other gear sets and it pretty much is a wild card it counts for one of each that you have on there in this case it would make a three-piece pred and four-piece tactician and those stats are reload speed but mainly you're going for the assault rifle damage and the smg damage and for the tacticians authority uh, you have the 15 percent skill haste the 10 percent skill power increase and for the main one that you want out of this is the fourth every bullet you hit enemies with adds one percent bonus skill power every bullet your deployed skill hits enemies with adds 0.2 percent of bonus skill power skill power bonus max is 30 percent bonus is consumed on skill use so basically if you stack it properly you can get 30 more percent uh, skill power than what you currently have so if you add say another 50 to 60 K skill power to what I already have that's around the general bar ballpark that you'll be looking at so with complete stacks then I would be looking at around anywhere between 235 and 250 K skill power anywhere in those general areas and then uh, as we go over here to the abilities I am running the Pulse, the Tactical Scanner, which damage is increased when attacking any hostile targets identified by the Pulse Scanner. So I get an additional 17% crit chance and 22.7% crit hit damage. But as your skill power goes up for your stacks, so does your crit chance and your crit damage. That's why you're not only a uh, somewhat semi DPS build that you can lay down quite a significant amount of damage but also with the skill power that you have then you're going to be benefiting your group that you're with and plus uh, yourself as you can see here with the booster shot temporarily increases damage and damage resistance for the affected targets in addition to the normal healing effect so in this case self heal 113k and ally heal is 92k along with the resistance and damage bonus moving on to uh, my character sheet well I'm pretty sure you don't want to see my stats for the pistol we'll put that bad boy up 37 percent and 116 that's kind of low just because those uh, such as the crit chance that can be put on your holster and the crit damage as far as on your knee pads uh, instead you're going with skill haste and skill power so those values will reflect in these stats but you're going to make up for it plus more uh, when it comes to as soon as you hit your pulse so your crit chance will be maxed out and your crit damage uh, is basically any going to be anywhere between 140 to 150 crit damage so like I said, when your pulse goes live, um, you're going to be able to do just as much damage um, that anybody else is practically going to be doing. Headshot damage is at 55%. Stability don't really matter unless you have potato lame like I do. Uh, you got that little bonus in reload speed, which isn't really uh, necessary, uh, but it does uh, come out and come in handy. Assault rifle damage is plus 8%. SMG damage is plus 20%, damage to elites is 9%, 6% enemy armor damage, uh, skill haste 24% here, but um, like I said, if I had the skill haste on my chest piece, then that was going to uh, put the number around 31% skill haste, so that way you get your pulse and your heals back uh, a lot faster. 
survivability, max else is 317k.9. Armor mitigation, 31.85%, which is really low. Um, you at least want to be around 34 to 35% uh, would be the ideal situation. But as I said, once I optimize uh, each individual piece, then my stats will reflect that later on. And if you already have better pieces with better armor rolls, then your armor mitigation is going to be a lot higher than mine is there. And as you can see, 32% overall bleed resistance, 30% burn resistance, and 32% shock resistance. Now, moving on to your talents so of what you want to run uh, when you're running this build, and this is reflected on when you're in gr group play. Of course, medkit now gives you seven seconds of immunity from status effects. You want to run that just for the simple fact of either being set on fire, um, being shocked by shot grenades, or just for the uh, bleed that the Predator's Mark puts on you. And then you want to run triage, especially when you're in a group, because that's going to allow you to heal your teammates when you throw it on the hill, give them the bonuses that you get from your booster shot, and then in turn, you get that same thing, plus another 15% uh, cooldown on your other skills, such as getting your pulse back and be able to get your heal uh, back uh, much faster. Also, critical save, use a med kit during low health to increase damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds. And then strike back, reach low health to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20%. I mean, you can have combat medic instead of the critical save here. It just all depends on um, your own personal play style and how your friends do. Because, I mean, usually you want combat medic when you're in a uh, group play. But if you're the one shooting down your heels and each of those already have combat medic on, then you don't necessarily have to have it, especially if you have... Uh, more or less a lot of nomad builds or such as like a d3 uh, in your group because they're going to be pretty tanky as it is and you know they have their procs on their nomad and so on and so forth but that's my interpretation and and how i've come to i guess create this little frankenstein shredder build because it absolutely does shred um and can hold up to basically anything that's in the dz if it's played right you just got to have your footwork down uh, and like I said, your values and stats will be much higher if you threw something together like this, if you have better armor rolls on your gear, and you'd have more skill haste and skill power. Um, if you have a ninja bag that actually has skill power as the major attributes, and then before you're even you're, you get your stats you're going to have 192 193 skill power without having stacks uh, from taking damage just for having the four piece tactician so that makes your pulse even more potent and your heals even more effective but this is relentless thank you guys so much for tuning in let me know what got what you think in the comment section below uh, i will be out here grinding so that way i can get more gear and keep optimizing things and i'll give you an update uh, later on once I do have this build optimized and once um, I continue to play with it uh, more in the DZ and keep wrecking fools with Reggie Merck and Hood Type and Meshack and Magnus aka the Splatter Squad then I'll update you but I'm going to continue to uh, just go in here and theory craft and put together different things um, because you know I don't mind p people running or doing whatever they want to but I choose not to more or less follow the crowd, but more or less forge my own path. So I'm just going to be different, try to work with something different that, uh, that's outside the norm of what everybody else is using, and just have fun with it. And that's the most important thing. No matter what you run, it doesn't matter what anybody says about what build you play with, as long as you're happy with it and you're having fun, that's all that matters. So please be kind to one another, show some love, and all your support is much appreciated. And like I said, if you're new to the channel, your subscription will be much appreciated. So ground and pound that like and subscribe button. And turn on post notifications so that way you know each and every time I go live and live stream or new videos and new content comes up. And let me know what you guys want to see like later on, such as when uh, Fallout 76, if you're interested in seeing some gameplay of that. Uh, Anthem when it drops. Division 2, of course. Or any other games. But thank you guys so much. We'll see you a bunch later.